drop by drop adding water to the filter paper and the soil do not add water only to one side make sure to you wet all the sides of the filter paper with this dropper so when you are adding water to the soil filled with filter paper definitely when you start adding water some amount of water will be absorbed by the sand of the soil present in the filter paper then after absorbing some amount of water the remaining amount of water will get filtered in and get and get collected in the beaker so you understood right you have taken a beaker you have taken a funnel in that funnel you have put filter paper later you have added some amount of soil to that filter paper then with the help of a dropper you are adding water drop by drop and you have wetted all the surface of the filter paper then the sand has absorbed some amount of water and the remaining water will be filtered and stored in this beaker so this is how you see that some amount of water is absorbed by the soil and the remaining excess water has been collected in the beaker so what you understand suppose the weight of the soil you have taken is 50 grams right so the initial volume of the water in the measuring cylinder so you have taken a water in a glass 50 ml then 50 ml you have poured drop by drop so the weight of the soil was 50 50 grams and in a glass suppose you have taken 50 ml of water so the weight of the soil is considered 50 grams earlier what is is there in the filter paper then the initial volume of the water in the measuring cylinder suppose you have taken 50 ml suppose that is not that is considered as uml suppose you have taken 50 ml of water initially that will be considered as uml and the final volume of water in the measuring cylinder so consider the weight of the soil which you have taken in the filter paper as 50 grams then next initial volume of the water in the measuring cylinder so here separately you have taken 50 ml of water that which you were pouring drop by drop with the help of the dropper that will be considered as uml the amount of glass of water which we have taken and poured it drop by drop into this funnel is 50 ml that is uml then what is the final volume of water in the measuring cylinder some amount of water is definitely absorbed by this filter paper then the remaining amount is collected in this beaker that is the final volume of water left after absorption by this filter paper so the final volume of water in the measuring cylinder is vml so understood right the initial water you have taken suppose it is 50 ml that is uml the weight of the soil is 50 grams and the final amount of water left after absorption is vml so with this we can calculate how much amount of water is absorbed so the volume of water absorbed by the soil is u minus v that is initial volume minus the final which was left that is u minus v ml the water is measured in ml right so it is volume of water absorbed by the soil is initial volume minus final volume that is u minus v ml but if we want to calculate the percentage of water absorbed we want the measurement in grams so the if we are converting this ml into grams so the volume is converted into weight so weight of the water absorbed by the soil is u minus v grams because 1 ml is equal to 1 gram the amount will be same 1 ml is equal to 1 gram so this volume we are converting into weight because if we want to calculate the percentage of water absorbed we need the measurement in grams or kilograms that is the reason we have converted the weight into volume into weight that is ml into gram the amount remains same because 1 ml is equal to 1 gram so finally to calculate the percentage of water absorbed by the soil it is u minus v by 50 into 100 that is weight of the water absorbed what is the weight of the water absorbed u minus v initial volume minus final volume by weight of the soil how much was weight of the soil 50 gram into 100 that gives us the percentage of water so to calculate the percentage of water we have converted the volume into weight then the amount is similar the amount remains same only the units of measurement change because 1 ml is equal to 1 gram so the percentage of water absorbed is weight of the water absorbed this u minus v divided by weight of the soil 50 gram 200 that gives us the absorption percentage so this is how the absorption percentage will be calculated and this can be done with different types of soil like clay soil sandy soil loamy soil for everything you will get separate amount the highest number of water the highest quantity of water is absorbed by the clay soils then after that comes 
loamy soils and the least amount of water absorbed will be by the sandy soil because in clay soil the amount the particles are tightly packed and it has a good water holding capacity clay soils have the highest water absorption capacity after that loamy soils come because it is a mixture of equal amount of clay and because it is a mixture of equal amount of sandy and clay soil loamy soils come second in order they absorb almost half of the water then sandy soils absorb the least amount of water so that is the absorption rate of three different types of soils the highest is clay the least is sandy and in middle comes loamy soil so soil and crops so how does the soil related to crops what are the factors affecting soil so what are the factors that affect the soil wind suppose if wind air heavily blows the uppermost layer will be washed off so that is how wind affects the soil then rainfall suppose if floods occur then also the top layers of the soil will be washed off floods cyclones then temperature excessive hot temperatures make the soil dry because all the upper the heat what happens with the help of heat the moisture content of the soil will be evaporated in the form of water vapor by condensation then light if there is less light of there is more sunlight also soil get affect then humidity humidity is nothing but the moisture content if there is no moisture again the soil goes dry then climate the various climatic conditions also affect the soil and various components of soil also affect the soil so various components of the soil that means what type of plants grow in the soil all these affect the soil then what are the different types of crops grown in different types of soils in india in different cities we have different types of soil everywhere so what crops can be grown in which type of soil then coming to clay lay soil clay lay soil has the highest water holding capacity so in clay lay soil many crops can be grown like wheat gram and paddy paddy is rice then other than these crops these clay lay soils is used for the construction of pots clay pots we know now we use for water purpose we store water in pots so those are the pots then we have toys made up of soils then also statues sometimes so clay lay soils are used for growing of crops like wheat gram and paddy and for the construction of pots toys and statues so clay lay soil is the most beneficial type of soil because it has good water holding capacity then moving on to the sandy soil sandy soil doesn't hold much water so that is the reason only cotton can be grown so cotton doesn't require more water so a cotton crop can be grown in sandy soil in loamy soils loamy soils is a mixture of sandy soil and clay soil it has also a good water holding capacity so wheat gram and lentils can be grown in this loamy soils lentils means all the dals what we use masoor dal urad dal and all those so these are the different types of crops which grow in different types of soils then the last topic is soil erosion what is soil erosion the removal of the land surface by water wind or ice so the top surfaces of the soil will be washed off either by excessive rainfall or excessive drought or excessive wind so that results in erosion the washing off of the top layers of the soil then it is seen mostly in the desert areas or bare lands where there is no vegetation desert areas no rainfall bare lands no planting of crops no vegetation how can this soil erosion be avoided we it can be avoided by forestation that means growing more green areas green lands if there are plants there will be water holding capacity there will be exchange of water between the plant and the soil thereby if we grow more forest more green land areas the soil erosion can be avoided so now we conclude this chapter you have understood the types of soils you have read about the properties of the soils types of crops grown in the soils classifications of soils everything now it is clear to you the layers of the soils and